Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat at purihin ang Panginoon sa kanyang patuloy na kabutihan at uh, pagkamatapat sa ating buhay. And I hope and I pray that you are doing well in your houses, in, your, in whatever responsibilities na kinakarap ninyo ngayon. Maybe some of us, some of you that are listening, eh, may mga trabaho pa. So we praise God again. We praise God talaga for all the, the support and all the, His faithfulness in our lives. And I hope and I pray na sa pagpatuloy po natin ng pag-aaral ng salita ng Panginoon, especially sa hapon na ito, na yung isipan po natin at yung puso natin ay handa sa pag-aaral ng salita ng Panginoon. Inanyahan ko kayo to join me in reading the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We'll be reading starting in verse 17 going to verse 21. This will be a segue Uh, continuation as well of our study in the book of Romans. There's a topic na pinag-aralan po natin doon talking about reconciliation. And here it is uh, a subtopic towards that or in regards to that. And I hope and I pray that this will be a blessing to all of us as well. So let me read to you verse 17 going to verse 21 and just follow me with your with your eyes and uh, I hope and I pray that um, your Bibles are there with you. And if not, you are following and you're listening to me. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, the word of God will tell us, this, is, this will be in, in, in King James Version, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Verse 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The title of our study tonight, or this afternoon, is New Life, Renewed Purpose. And I hope and I pray that this will be a blessing for us, as well as a guide for our life in Christ. Let us pray. Our great God and loving Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for allowing us continually wherein we could be able to read your word freely with liberty as well as we could be able to study it. And I pray, Lord, that your word will not just be, will not just remain in our ears, but it will continually resonate, be resonated, you know, sa amon nga mga kaunahuna and as well as it could connect to our hearts dear Father to motivate us and to guide us that we could be able O Lord to practice your word in our lives and as well as your word will continually and until you are finished with our lives your word will change us will transform us into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ so as we study your word at this point of time Panginoon humingi mo kami ng dagdag na katalinuhan at paunawa ga, galing sa iyo at galing sa, bala, sa banal na Espiritu. So Lord, we praise you for this opportunity. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So as I said earlier, um, this will be partly ay, ay may connection din po sa ating pinag-aaralan in the book of Romans. In the book of Romans, there are there are two big big statement po na ating napag-aralan in regards to the new life, the new relationship, the new status na meron po tayo in Jesus Christ. At sinabi po ng Romans chapter 5 verse 1, Therefore we are now being justified by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think if you are here with us in our study, and if you are following our study in the book of Romans, na nakita na po ninyo nito, and this will be sort of a review of what we have learned. Actually, this was the one na pinag-aralan po natin nung last Sunday. At sinabi po dito, that through His outpouring love, we enjoy a reconciled relationship with God. 
Na dahil po pinadama, pinakita sa atin ng Panginoon, binigay sa atin ng Panginoon yung kanyang pagmamahal, at alam po natin na yung pagmamahal na ito is in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. That God has shown His love, God demonstrated His love for us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And if you could remember, if you could memorize John 16, the word of God will tell us, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That is true. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. So dito po, at ating po na pag-aralan na yung Panginoon po natin ay pinakita, binuhos po sa atin yung kanyang pagmamahal. At nung tinanggap po natin yung pagmamahal ng Diyos by faith, na nampalataya po tayo, at sinabi na salita ng Panginoon, because of that faith on God's, God's love and God's salvation for us, sinabi dito, we are now enjoying, and we studied that last Sunday, we are now enjoying a reconciled relationship with God. And sinabi dito, our reconciliation to God means three things, according to Romans chapter 5. Number one, that we will never experience His eternal judgment. That we are now excluded, that we are now exempted, that we are now rescued from the wrath of God. That our God is, is angry towards sin, that our God is wrathful towards sin. And because we are enemies of God, that wrath, that judgment, na nanggaling sa Panginoon, will surely, sinabi ng salita ng Panginoon, we are condemned through that, because, of those, because of that sin. But because of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, nakita po natin na binigyan po tayo ng Panginoon ng bagong relationship. And that, that kind of relationship is a reconciled relationship. And because of the reconciliation, dahil bumalik na po yung ating connection, ating relationship sa Panginoon, sabi nito, we will never experience the judgment of God anymore. And then the second thing we learn about this one is that we will certainly experience eternal life. And then lastly, that we can confidently enjoy in the presence of God. Now, having the same, actually it, it's still talking about the same thing, about our new life, new status, about a life that is being justified in Christ. We learned this, ito actually yung unang na-learn natin, but I just chose this to present um, last um, in, or, uh, later on. So sinabi dito that our new status in Christ that is referred to a life that is being justified or pinawalang sala. And that is the work of God as well. That only God can make us justified. Ang ibig sabihin noon, dahil sa ginawa ni Cristo Jesus, dahil si Cristo Jesus yung nagbayad ng ating mga kasalanan by, by being a sacrifice on the cross for us. Binayaran niya, sinabi nga ng, in the book of Colossians, he, he was, he nailed it to the tree. Our debt has been paid because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if, and if you and I put your faith or put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, God will give us a new status in the Lord Jesus Christ. And yung status na yun is a, a justified life. And together with that, with that status, meron po tayong na-enjoy na opportunity. Number one, we we'll learn about the opportunity to enjoy peace with God. We are not enemies of God anymore. Number two, the opportunity to enjoy a privilege to approach God. That we could come, that we could approach God in His presence. Why? Because we are now called children of God. And not only that, because Christ is our high priest. He connects us. He intercedes for us. I know those were just big words. But in a simple way, we have now a direct connection sa Panginoon. Ito din po yung dahilan kung bakit every time we pray, hindi na po tayo dumadaan sa ibang mga santo or in other people. Why? Because we now have a direct privilege. We now have a privilege of approaching God directly through the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the last the last opportunity that we could enjoy because of the new status that we gained through the Lord Jesus Christ is the, in, the opportunity to enjoy future promises of God. 
Ang dami pong promise ng Panginoon na binigay sa atin in His Word. And most of those promises, and if not all, are given only or are applicable only to those people who put their faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. The promise of eternal life, the promise of reconciliation to God, the promise of a life in the presence of God. To be rescued from sin and have the freedom in the presence of God. And I hope and I pray that you will learn more about these promises of God and of course as, as part of as a as a preacher as a pastor from time to time i'll be we'll be learning of these promises and i hope and i pray that you could join us when we will be doing those kind of series as well we still have a long way to go in studying and learning of the scriptures and i believe na hindi hindi lang po ako yung pwedeng magturo nun sa inyo i hope that you will read the scriptures that the best way for you to learn about these promises of god is if you and if you personally kayo mismo yung maghanap at magbasa ng salita ng Panginoon to learn and to claim it and to believe those promises of God in your life and one of those promises that I really I'm really fond of mentioning is the promise in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 and sinabi doon being confident of this very thing that he which is God what began a good work in you will perform it will do it until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. That our God who, who saved us, our God who promised us great things, our God who started the good work in us, hindi po tayo papabayaan ng Panginoon. That we believe that in His Word, God has purpose for us. That God has, has planned for our lives. And partly of that we will be learning, will be touching at this point of time. As we go on now to the passage that we are learning, but sinabi dito, it's in connection as well to the new life in Christ, in the version of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, ito po makita natin, verse 17. Sinabi dito, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Now this is as well the same idea, the same picture. Na sinabi din sa Romans chapter 5, a person that is justified by faith. And every time you, you would hear and you would see in the, in the Bible the phrase, in Christ, it would refer only to those people who put their faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. In, to put it simply, sa mga ligtas. It refers to the saved people. To the people who had already been cleansed, had been redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because they put their faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Sinabi dito, so for those people who put their faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, that person or those people, they were called new creatures. Binago tayo ng Panginoon. We are changed. We are transformed. If you remember, the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 would say to us that we are dead in our trespasses and sins. Now, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Now, from dead, we have now received life. From a person who is slave to sin, we became servants of God. From sons of the devil, we became sons and children of God. So we became a new creature. And sinabi nga dito sa verse, sa pagutuloy ng verse 17, old things are passed away. Now, there are a lot of things that would refer to the old things. It would refer to the old nature, the sins, the guilt. Let's just say the vices, the addiction, all the things that would refer to the worldly things, the things that, that glorify self and sin. Not God. The things that, that would really be in contrast to who God is. The old things. The fleshly things. Or in, in the words of the scriptures, the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life. So I believe all things, when you are now in Christ and you became a new creature, those old things are now passed away. It will be changed. And sinabi dito ni Paul, all, or behold, all things are become new. 
One simple truth that we could learn upon this passage is this, that once a person put his faith truly and genuinely in the Lord Jesus Christ, that person will never be the same. At ito po ito, not just in my life, at least in the lives of those people, but in the lives of Apostle Paul himself. No wonder he could say this powerfully. As sinabi niya, if any man, whoever he is, whoever you are, na pagbinigay mo ang pananampalataya mo sa Panginoong Jesus, that if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, He will change you. You will be a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And that is why our main statement for tonight is this one. That our new life in Christ gave us a renewed purpose for Christ. But not only that, that, that we have been given a new life, if, if you put it, if you put your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, but together with that new life, you will be enjoying, or you will be receiving a renewed purpose for your life. A purpose that has that is more than just looking forward for things that will satisfy you temporarily. A purpose that has eternal in value. A purpose that has significance. The purpose that will truly glorify God. A purpose that, that will give your life Give you the real meaning, the real reason why you are still here in this world. world right? I'm talking about in connection about this statement, and no wonder Apostle Paul would would use this these words as well. This this thought I mean, because it happened to his life. It is his testimony. That when the Lord Jesus Christ, when he met the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ gave him new life. God gave him new life in the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that new life that he has, he has a renewed purpose. And that purpose that for him, it is still for the Lord Jesus Christ. Your life and my life can only matter, especially kung tayo po ay mananampalataya na ng Panginoon. If you are believers, if you are a Christian, your life, in your life, can only find its true meaning and purpose if that life is lived for the Lord Jesus Christ. At sinabi dito ni Apostle Paul, actually it was, it was a note of, of Luke in the book of Acts about the life of Paul. And this is what happened to him after he received, after he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And... This is what it says. Verse 20. Acts chapter 9, verse 20. And immediately, Paul, that is, actually, it's name, his name still at this point of time is Saul. And immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God. Now, as we go to verse 21, what makes this verse this verse so powerful is what what is explained in verse 21 verse 21 says and all who heard him were amazed and said is not this the man who made havoc who made chaos in Jerusalem is that this who's a man who's made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called upon this name, which is in reference to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And has he had not come here, will, will be on Damascus for this purpose, to bring them bound before the chief priest. Now this is the reputation of Saul at this point of time. He is the one who captures, he is the one who destroys the people, the believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we, as we go back to verse 21, that same person who has this reputation of, of destroying the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, he proclaimed in verse 21 that Jesus is the Son of God. 
How? How did, how did all happen? Actually, according to some scholars, they would call Apostle Paul a terrorist. A person who would kill, a person who would hunt those believers. And actually, in, in the mind, in the, in the thought of Apostle Paul, he's doing the right thing. But when he met the Lord Jesus Christ, doon na intindihan at doon nalaman ni Apostle Paul that what he is doing is actually the total opposite of the purpose of God for his life. And God changed him the moment he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he started, sinabi that the new purpose of his life now is to proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ. Before he destroys, he's trying to destroy the followers in the name of Jesus. Now he is the one who proclaims. What a change. What a renewed life. What a renewed purpose for his life. As we go to verse 22, sinabi dito, But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. That was a wonderful testimony. And no wonder he said in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that if any man, whoever that person is, that if any man is in Christ or be in Christ, that man is a new creature. That man is transformed. That man is changed. Kung ilagay din po natin yung word in the book of Romans, that man is justified. That man has gained a new status in life. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That is why we could say, that this, if truly, if truly your life and in my life, we have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, we put our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, sinabi dito, that our life has been renewed. We are now a new creature. You are now a new creature. You have been changed. And if you have been changed through the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a renewed purpose for your life. And what is that? Sinabi dito sa verse 18. The word of God will tell us. And all things are of God. It would refer to, actually, there are a lot of explanations to this one. They would say it would refer to all the creations of the world. Probably, it can be like that. It, it can be, it, it can mean all the creations of the world. It can mean as well all the, the people of the world. All things are of God. But according to the scholars, this, this statement is primarily referring to the new life that we received in Christ and all the benefits, all the things that we are enjoying through Christ. And all things, all these things are of God or Sinabi ng other, uh, uh, other versions are from God. Wala pong bagay na na-enjoy po natin sa buhay na ito. Believers or unbelievers alike. All the things that we are enjoying in this life, they are things truly, they came from God. And most especially, if you are a believer, if you are, if you put your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, sinabi dito, you have more things to enjoy. And that thing that you are enjoying through the Lord Jesus Christ, nanggaling din po yan sa Panginoon. And it was he and he explained it more. So, I mean, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ. And all these things that binigay ng Panginoon, the same God, He is the same God who reconciled us to the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only that, the next part, not only that He reconciled us to the Lord Jesus Christ. In the next part here, the same God who has given us these all things has given us the ministry of reconciliation. He has given us the new purpose, the new reason of living. So to follow up our main statement earlier on, this is our, our next point this evening. 
that our renewed purpose in life is to reconcile others back to Christ. That the new reason why, that the reason why God has saved us to the Lord Jesus Christ, so that our life will be used by Him to reconcile others as well. The reason kung bakit ikaw yung unang naligtas sa family mo, I don't know if if that's true, if you believe that, 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 but if you're the first one to be saved in your family, one of the purpose, one of the purpose of your life, as stated in the scriptures, is to persuade, is to reconcile your family back to God. It is your responsibility. It is your purpose now. To preach the gospel, to share the gospel to them, to talk to them about the Lord Jesus Christ, that they also may be reconciled back to Him. So our renewed purpose in life is to reconcile others back to Christ. Now, sinabi niya sa verse 19, the word of God will tell us, that is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to Himself. Actually, Paul was just explaining here. The same thing as well. He just starts with explaining to us paano, paano tayo na-reconcile ng Panginoon or anong ginawa ng Diyos sa mundo. And then he says, not counting their trespasses against them. The, the, the big words that would describe them is this, that Christ redeemed us, binili tayo ni Christo Jesus ng Panginoon by, by, by the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And after that, He justified us. He did not count our sins against us. He declared us righteous. And the reason for that, sinabi ng Apostle Paul, because God has a purpose for the, for the life of those people that He redeemed, that He justified. And what is that? God entrusted to us the message of reconciliation. Merong, merong inentrust yung Panginoon sa atin. God has given us the new purpose, the renewed purpose of our life. Kung dati yung buhay natin ay... I just it's just following what we want. Probably you have dreams in your life. You have, you have ambitions of who I am, and I have mine too. Ever since I was young, I have a lot of dreams in my life. And you, of course, habang habang tumatanda tayo, when you go to school, your dreams mo na na, na mo modify. Matalam po niyo the the moment you clearly understand the purpose of God for your life. And the moment you clearly understand that your life will only matter, it will find its true purpose and satisfaction is when you submit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And sinabi to dito ni Apostle Paul, if there is one more purpose that is applicable, not just to the pastors, but to every one of the believers, is this. It is that we are being entrusted with the message of reconciliation. What does that mean? Verse 20, that we became ambassadors for Christ. I've heard this a long time, that we are ambassadors for Christ. That we are ambassadors for Christ. What does ambassadors for Christ mean? This is it just does it just mean to be a representative? Actually, according to, to the scholar, I think it was MacArthur who's, who made a commentary regarding this. He said that the word ambassador would mean an elder. A person who is old enough to be trusted with a message that is special. With a message that is valuable. And that person... Nung binigay sa kanya yung mensahe na yon, the one who gave him that message has put his trust on that person and that person, that ambassador, should be able to proclaim and to give the message to those people that should be the recipient of the message. And sinabi dito that we are, the purpose of our life now is that we are ambassadors. That we are the proclaimers. That we are now the messengers of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And sinabi dito as ambassadors, God making His appeal through us. The message does, is not from us. The message comes from God. And what message is that? The message actually we will learn there is this one. Be reconciled to God. That's the message. The message that God is offering, the message that God is, is allowing, is entrusting for us to proclaim to the people is that we should persuade them that these people should reconcile themselves or their hearts to God as well. It be the same way that we are reconciled to God. Through what? That is by putting our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. We are ambassadors. God is making an appeal through us. Kung gamitin po natin yung mga, mga illustrations na ito or mga picture na ito, we are just instruments. Daluyan lang po tayo. That God is the one who gives the message. Tayo yung dinadaanan ng message. And then the people are the one who will be listening. And by God's grace, by God's working in their life, they will believe on the message through us. That is our new purpose. And sinabi dito as ambassadors, it is not really primarily our responsibility. How can we reconcile others? Hindi po talaga na napilitin natin sila or that sabi natin, ligtas ka na. Hindi po yun yung responsibility natin. But to reconcile others to Christ, our responsibility is to persuade them. To reconcile others to Christ, we must persuade them to believe in the finished work of, of Christ. Only God can save them. But as ambassadors, given this new ministry, given this, this opportunity, this Merong inentrust yung Panginoon sa atin is the message of reconciliation. And how, and how can we do that? Sinabi dito, we must persuade the people to believe in the finished work of Christ. Sinabi dito, we implore you, this is the word of Paul, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled. Be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. And the message resonates and it repeats the same in the mind of Apostle Paul. That if this is the purpose of his life, he puts it in one picture that I, I am just an instrument, I am just proclaiming a simple message again and again and again. I am trying to persuade the people. Be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. How are we? How He's doing that? He is persuading them. He's proclaiming to them. He is pleading to them to believe on the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, makita po natin John in the in, in another verses that is written by Apostle Paul. Let's start in, book, in the book of First Timothy chapter two. Sinabi dito, "This is good and is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior." And one of God's desire, one of God's plan for the people is that all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now in verse 17 of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, this is interesting in the words of Apostle Paul himself. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with the words, and not with the words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of his power. Apostle Paul has a simple message, has a single message. As he follows the purpose of his life, and what is that? The purpose of his life is to be an instrument of reconciliation between God, between God and the people. 
through the Lord Jesus Christ. That he will be the one that will be proclaiming. Be reconciled to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Be reconciled to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, he is not, he is not a perfect man. Ang dami pong sinabi na sa ito ng Panginoon, probably ang dami, dami, pong, ang dami pong weakness ni Apostle Paul. He has a bad reputation, a bad background. He is in a way a terrorist of the believers. But regardless of his background, nung binago siya ng Panginoon, nung namit niya, niya, niya si Jesus Christ, and that Christ changed his life, he received a renewed purpose for his life. And from that time on, he followed that purpose. And that's why his life have or gained its meaning in the eyes of God. For Apostle Paul, it's not about his glory. For Apostle Paul, it's not about his fame. For Apostle Paul, it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the purpose of his life. To proclaim about Christ. To persuade people. That they will be reconciled to the Lord Jesus Christ. To God as well through the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing more and nothing less. And even at the end of his life, he said, I have fought the good fight. He had run the race. He had finished well. Because he knew, he clearly understood, and he followed the purpose that God, that, that the Lord Jesus Christ has given him. And what of the message that you should be proclaiming? to preach the gospel. One amazing verse that we read in verse 21 is this. For God had made Christ to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. It's all about the message. The message of the Lord Jesus Christ. na si Kristo Jesus pinadala ng Diyos sa mundong ito. That the Lord Jesus Christ became a sacrifice for your sin and for my sin. He became sin for us. At nung niligtas niya tayo, sinabi dito that we might be made the righteousness of God. In a way, that we will have a renewed purpose for our lives. And that is to follow. That is to proclaim. That is to obey the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, sinabi dito, as we close this tonight, our renewed purpose in life is to reconcile others back. Are you saved? Have you put your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ already? Then you have now a new purpose in your life. And I hope and I pray that the, this purpose hindi po natin makalimutan. That is to reconcile others back to Christ. And how can we do that? How should we fulfill that purpose is this. To reconcile others to Christ, we must persuade them to believe in the finished work. Not all the time, our efforts or our, our preaching, our proclaiming, our persuading of those people, hindi po lahat, it will become a success. People will, may try to, to reject our message. People may try to reject the message of the Lord Jesus Christ about the gospel. But always remember this, it's not about how many souls na nanadala po natin sa Diyos. It's all about 
doing faithfully what God has purposely called us into. Because our new life in Christ gave us a renewed purpose for Christ. And here, I pray, hindi pa natin makalimutan ito. God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, has reconciled us back to Him. Now, we are enjoying a lot of things. Peace with God. Approaching directly the presence of God. We are enjoying, we are enjoying a lot of privileges because of that reconciled relationship. Now, I hope and I pray that that new life that we can have, that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ will remind us in the scriptures kasama ng bagong buhay kasama ng buhay na galing ni Cristo Jesus we have, we have as well a renewed purpose and what is that? that is the purpose of doing the ministry of reconciliation preaching, proclaiming the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and telling them be, be reconciled to God as well through the Lord Jesus Christ. Talam po ninyo, mga kapatid, kung meron pang message, meron pa tayong dapat ishare in our time today, this is it. Telling the people that there is no other way. Telling the people that there is no other way to escape. The judgment to escape the sufferings and the wrath of God and to give them hope in this life if only this hope this salvation can only be found in the Lord Jesus Christ at yun po yung message natin yun po yung dinadalan natin and I hope pray na dadalhin po natin until the Lord Jesus Christ comes the message to, for the people to be reconciled back to Him. Let us pray as we close. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for reminding us of the renewed purpose that we have because of the Lord Jesus Christ, because of the new life that we have. So I pray, O oh Lord, that may you will constantly remind me of that as well, as I will remind your people but one of the most important of the primary reason kung bakit mo kami niligtas first is that we can glorify you, O Lord, by doing the purpose that you have given for us. The purpose of proclaiming the gospel. The purpose of being an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. Which means having or doing this ministry of reconciliation proclaiming the words of reconciliation that there is no other way to be reconciled back to God only the Lord Jesus Christ so Lord thank you for this message and I hope and I pray that this will remind us that we should live our lives following and obeying this renewed purpose of our lives is our prayer in Christ's name.